state elections. We shall also be speaking to some of the candidates vying for the chairmanship of the opposition All People's Congress Party um, in the show this morning. But now in the studio, we've been joined by Dr. Dennis Bright, who has been re-elected um, the chairman and leader of the National Grand Coalition Party. Good morning, Dr. Bright, and welcome to the show. Good morning. Always happy to be here. It's Thank a pleasure you. having you. We also have with us Harold um, Domingo, um, the outgone um, interim secretary for the North, um, I guess. Um, good morning and welcome to the good show. Good morning Harold. and thanks for having me on your show. All right. Dr. Bright, let, let's start off. Um, <coughs> first off, um, it appears the NGC is the second party to have gotten um, ready for 2023 multi-tier elections after the SLPP. So, so take us first, take us through how the convention, the conference itself, how was it like? I think you, to appreciate the importance of uh, this uh, event mm. and this achievement, because this is what we consider it to be, mm -hmm. you actually need to know um, what the, the steps, right. All right, that we had to go through. I mean, we, first of all, the party mm. um, had to change its constitution, to, to review its constitution, mm. went through the process of reviewing our constitution. On the basis of the new constitution, we started uh, the process of uh, uh, having a, a lower level elections. Lower level elections mm. starting at the ward level, constituency, district, mm. and regional. Uh, before coming to the national uh, convention itself. So uh, as far as we're concerned, that's a very, very big achievement. Mm. We, it's very important for us because we are the second political party mm. in Sierra Leone um, right now that has been able to go through this process. Mm. Uh, we're very proud. We are able to mobilize um, over 10,000, 10,000, nearly 11,000 mm. uh, people as executives across the country. And they are all right now installed mm. in their positions uh, across the, the length and breadth of this country. Mm. So we take great pride in, in, in having worked very hard uh, some people were asking, what is happening to NGC? Mm. What is NGC doing? I think when you see that we are capable of pulling this, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, they would realize now that NGC has been working very hard. So you, you, you've just um, um, made mention of some of the steps leading to the conference itself. You, <coughs> you talked about um, amending the constitution of the party. What were the, the areas that the party looked at that needed amendments as we head um, to the 2023 elections? Well, actually, we, we, we had to look at the structure of the party itself. Um, the original constitution was very ambitious. Um, um, because I think we went down to uh, the smallest unit was uh, below the world. Mm. And so we'll find out that it's very, very ambitious. So we had to make the smallest unit the world itself. Um, and then moving up to we, we also uh, thought that uh, the official uh, division, political division of Sierra Leone mm. to 16 districts was not enough for us, mm. for our own administration. So we added uh, two more districts, uh, dividing the western region into, giving two more uh, 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 districts in the western region. The urban and the rural. Uh, yes, mm. yes. Now, um, apart from that, um, the, even the, we, we decided that the women and the youth uh, should have a separate convention, as it were, mm. to choose their own executives, to select their own executives, which means mobilizing the women and mobilizing the youth so that they can come together and choose who they want. So this is why the national convention itself was preceded by a youth convention and a women's uh, convention. Those were some 
some of the uh, little things that we added, tweaking the original uh, uh, constitution mm -hmm. so that it will uh, have the, the kind of, reflect the kind of uh, structure that um, we desire to have across the country. Uh, just out of curiosity, if the National <coughs> Convention itself was preceded by the Women's Convention and the Youth Convention, um, did that in any way suggest that um, the youth and the women were not going to vie for any positions at the national level? They just have to go with the, different, the women's wings? Yes, you stay there. The youth, you stay there. Mm -hmm. No, in fact, um, the... The national officers mm. that form the national executive itself, at, at the national, uh, in, 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 in terms of proportion, uh, there is over 44% mm. of the national executive itself is composed of women. So you can see. And the leader, the women's leader, selected by the women, and the uh, youth leaders selected by the youth are all members of the national officers uh, uh, group. Mm -hmm. So it's not that they are separate, but we think that the business of the women needed to be put together so that they come together, they have their own perception and things that they want to do, their plans and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. That's why they have a separate uh, convention. But they are part and parcel of the, the general, yes. All right. Um, Aaron, <coughs> let, let, let's quickly hear from you. Um, what did you make of the national convention of the NGC? Um, well, f um, first of all, I would say to you that this is my first experience mm. um, working in a party's national convention. I'm very um, excited that I went through that experience. Mm -hmm. And what I saw was something that I've never seen before in my entire life. And like what Dr. Dennis Bright was saying, we had the <coughs> women and the youth, they had to take care of their affairs separately, focused on what is very important to them, and them being also part of the national executive, as Dennis Bright um, just mentioned. However, when we spoke about the organization of everything, how you know, due processes were, were being followed, and everything that happened at the city hall and eventually at um, the family kingdom, you know, that's something that would go down in the history books of our republic. And that is one thing I'm very proud of as a Sierra Leonean and as a member of the National Grand Coalition Party. Because this party, as we know it, is only in its cradle stage. We're only about, what, five, five years? Five years. Yeah. And we are <coughs> at this level. Imagine a five-year-old party having a national convention after the main ruling party in this country. Does that tell you something about how organized and how determined the NGC party is as we move into our next election in 2023? What you, what you experienced during the convention itself, or prior to the convention, what, I mean, was your understanding of um, democracy, especially internal party democracy? How does it work? How does it transcend to the national level? And with the convention you, you witnessed, um, w w was there any um, traits of what you've always pictured as a democratic party? The simple answer to your question is yes. Everything was democratic mm. in the sense that all procedures were followed from ward level right up to the regional to make sure that those structures are being put in place. And when you see a party organize itself into, I would say, 446 words, and as a... As <laughs> As someone who is new in the business, mm. I did not at first understand what word level was, the district or the, you know, the regional level. But as I got involved in the planning and understanding from the chairman and different people that I was working with, each of those words, um, regions and stuff, they had 18 executives. And let me just break it down for you a little bit. With 446 words having 18 executives, you have a total of about 8,028 people serving at that level. 
And as we build up, that is where Dr. Dennis White did tell Here at the Princeton Review, we've long said that the SAT only tests your ability on mastering the SAT. So what do you have? Build up, that is where Dr. Dennis White did tell you that we have over 10,000, or we have 10,818 of those executives across the country. So we have structured the party so well at that level. And when it came to the, um, the election itself, everything was in place where we were able to identify, verify, and make sure that every delegate who was supposed to be on that convention, on the convention floor, they ended up voting. And that, for me, is the epitome of democracy. Mm. Dr. Bright, let me, let me quickly come back to you. Um, did the party elect um, its 2023 flag bearer? Not yet. Mm. Not yet. So, so uh, um, this is the national convention. Why are you going to elect them? We're saving the best for the last. <laughs> 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 All right. I asked that question because... For, for many political <laughs> pundits, I mean, those who are following what is happening um, in the political space at the moment, it appears mm -hmm. there's uncertainty around um, the, 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 the face mm -hmm. that would take the party to the 2023, especially the presidential um, mm -hmm. race. Um, uh, how prepared <coughs> is the NGC? Do you have phases? Do you have um, the right people who've expressed interest in um, vying for the party's ticket for the presidency? First of all, let me say that we are very methodical in the way we approach things. And mm -hmm. you would see by the outcome of this exercise mm -hmm. that we are very metho methodical. Mm -hmm. We go step by step and so on and so forth. Um, we're definitely coming to that. Mm -hmm. And I can assure you that um, there is space for competition mm -hmm. in our party for the flag bearership. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you look at the competition for the women's leader in my party, it was probably even more hotly contested, that position, than even the chairmanship mm -hmm. of the party. And, um, you know, uh, uh, it's, it's, it's beautiful to see how uh, democracy works. And just yesterday, um, the, the lady, the good lady who lost uh, that position, uh, came out with a statement, you know, congratulating uh, the winner and then offering uh, herself for service to the party as we move forward. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. But he was very hotly contested. Mm -hmm. And, of course, the chairmanship, as you know, <laughs> was, <laughs> was hotly contested too. So it's not um, a rubber stamping mm -hmm. uh, kind of thing that we have. Um, so we are just trying to use this, our party, I mean, to show a sample, a sample of how democracy itself should work. Mm -hmm. And that is how we're, we're, we, 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 are, we are moving on. So when it comes to the flag bearership, you definitely see, you will be invited mm -hmm. to see exactly how we, we're going to do it. So, so let, let, let's go back. In 2018, the, um, the elections um, well, <coughs> were, were, were left some very fascinating outcome in the sense that we saw the NGC gaining parliamentary seats, about four, mm -hmm. um, as a new party then. Mm -hmm. And with the way things are panning out, um, what's the st current strength of the NGC? Uh, are, are you planning putting <coughs> things together to get more? Or we, uh, is the, even the, the, the spaces, um, the four spaces you, you, you got, are, are you threatened already with that? Okay. Um, if, you, if you realize that uh, in 2018, we did not have... 10,818 foot soldiers mm. all over the country. Now, these are people who are implanted in every corner of this country. Our influence has spread widely in Sierra Leone. More and more people are thinking of 
proper change, not a change of persons, but a change of system. Now they understand that the change that they're looking for is not a change of people, but a change of system. So more and more people are getting ready <clears throat> for the NGC brand of politics, a politics that would definitely ensure the unity of this country, that could heal this nation, that could bring God back to the center of national affairs. That kind of politics, which will change an entire system, is what people are looking for now. People have the raw experience of mismanagement, the raw experience of deception and disappointment. The people of this country are disenchanted. They want to have something better for themselves. And the very fact that we are the second party that has completed the whole long process, the complicated process of an election is, I think, an indicator that we are ready. So we are not just ready for more seats in parliament, never mind the uh, proportional representation and the 12% threshold. We are even ready for more. Mm. And that is the, the presidency of this country. the presidency of this country. So, uh, uh, let, let me quickly take you, um, Dr. Bright. You just mentioned the proportional representation electoral system which has been introduced um, <coughs> by the government for the 2023 multi-tier elections. Mm -hmm. But going back, many people would tell you, Sierra Leone is a nation that has lost its soul. Now, what does the NGC offer at this point when the nation does not seem to, to be redeeming itself? The NGC has identified itself over the past four years. Mm. The NGC has identified itself with the ordinary people. The NGC has shown empathy with the people who are struggling in this country. The NGC is a party throughout these four years that has focused on issues and not just on fighting for position or power. What we are offering to this, 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 this nation is the cohesiveness that it needs, the peace and stability that it needs, so that you don't have one Part, a party coming to power and spending three years chasing the other and that sort of thing. You have serious people. We have been able to come to bring together a critical mass of progressive people that we believe will be able to turn the situation around. Sierra Linians, I agree with you, the country, the nation has lost its soul. It has lost its soul because the people do not believe politicians anymore. They just believe that politicians are liars, they are traitors, they betray them, and that sort of thing. They don't think about them. They don't have concern for them. What we are trying to offer is that things can be different. And Sierra Leone is a very small country. And even though people may not believe it because of their current experience that they are going through, we believe that if you have the right set of people to come together, and this right set of people do not just come from one party. Mm. They could come from any party. They could be a coalition of progressive minds. That's why we call our, our party the National Grand Coalition. Because if you focus just on one side, you will never be able to have the kind of peace that you should have so that you can run the country well. What we are offering to this country, therefore, is peace, stability, unity, which will be the bedrock for any development plan that you want to pursue in this country. We are offering How that. How would you devise that model? The SLPP promised peace, stability, <coughs> tranquility, and a, a prosperous nation. The APC promised safe. <coughs> 
So the NGC promising same, it's not new. I mean, it's not, these are not new vocabularies in the political dictionary, if, I mean, if, I, if, I, if I'm to put it. So what, what model are you devising to achieving I, that? You must have noticed that the NGC is composed of people who used to be SLPP, who used to be APC, mm. and people who never had anything to do with politics. And that is significant because for them to come and join a political party, some people had to make a very big decision because they never wanted to be associated with politics. Now, what will we do? The NGC does not have a problem working with any political party. When we started, we started with what we call constructive opposition. You must have heard uh, the Honorable uh, Dr. Kande Yumkela with constructive opposition, meaning that you focus on country first. You deal with that. And whether government, uh, 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 when government goes wrong, you condemn it, you criticize it, you oppose it. Mm -hmm. If they do something correct, you say, OK, that's fine. But what we believe that we can do is that we can work with the best people in this country. And we have no, we, we don't have any complexes. From every divide? From everywhere, anywhere. We don't have problem. If the, this is the right man, you don't ask. Listen, there used to be a period in this country when under President Kaba, he didn't care what political background you have. If you are able to do the job, he will put you there. That's what President Kaba did. And you see what was the result of that. Immediately after a war, he was able to repair this nation because he put the right people in the right place. But he didn't go around with uh, uh, spectacles or whatever looking for the correct party person or party picking, you know, to, to be able to fix them and fit them. No. He went out to look for the best. The NGC is going to do that. And when you do that, to be honest, you find out that you'll be able to turn this country around. People still don't believe it is possible mm. for Sierra Leone to be better than what it is now. I can tell you that in an NGC government, you will be able to begin to see the difference within three months. Within three months of an NGC government, you begin to see the difference. Very, very simple. Harold, Ar um, first off, what really got you interested into joining the NGC, to becoming a member of the NGC? Um, Samuel, I was born in Sierra Leone. I grew up in this country. I was educated here before I left. You know, I did my service. And all along, I've never been interested in politics. But over the last 30 or so years, mm. since I was a student growing up in this country, till I left, every time that I come back, I saw the country moving from where it was when, for example, I was a student and Dr. Bright was, was a lecturer at Fuari College. Back in those days, mm -hmm. things went downhill. And I said to myself, I have to participate in public service because this is for the good of our country. For me, as Dr. Dennis White just said, it is my country first. That is the fundamental um, principle that resides within me to be able to say, let me participate in public service. Mm. And that is the best I can do for my country. The reason being, I benefited from a lot of things here in Sierra Leone. I'm thankful that I'm a Sierra Leonean. I am proud that I'm a Sierra Leonean. I still hold my Sierra and pa my Sierra passport. I would never give, give, give that up for anything. So I'm saying all of this to say that for me, as one of the progressive minds in NGC, mm -hmm. I put the affairs of my country first. And with those like minds that we are um, assembling in the future, NGC is going to ensure that our political transformation is going to come into reality where you and I, our children and grandchildren, are going to be proud Sierra Leoneans. That's why I'm in this. 
This Samsung TV, the Neo Q LED picture is amazing. Proud Soviet Unions. That's why I'm in this. What, 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 make, what makes you so cocksure that the NGC is the vehicle that would take Sierra Leone to a destination where all of us are yearning? Because almost all of um, the, the solutions being proffered, as, I mean, what is happening with Sierra Leone, how can the problems be addressed and all of that, they're not new. And like Dr. Bright is saying, when you, we talk about change, it's not, I mean, the concept of bringing new people, but changing the system. So what system do you think better works for Sierra Leone? And do you think the NGC, I mean, has that system? The simple answer is yes. NGC has that system. And I'm overly confident in the fact that within leadership itself, we try to set those examples. We listen to the other side. When people criticize or they attack you because you don't go along with their vision or what have you, we're able to sit down, we listen, and then we come together as one because our fundamental goal is to put our country first. And this is what we have been working on assiduously to ensure that even if it is not in our generation, in our lifetime, but our children and grandchildren will pick up the, 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 the mantle and continue with this journey that we have, have begun, you see? Because at the end of the day, there's only one country, when you look at the world map, there's only one country that is called Sierra Leone. I don't know of another country that is called Sierra Leone. And if we lose this opportunity, it is going to be bad for us as a people. And we are in the process. We will continue to work very hard. The last four days of last week, when we had our convention, I almost shed tears when I saw the throngs of people coming from all parts of our country. From the, the, the most interior part of Sierra Leone, they came, people were lying on the floor, they slept everywhere. But they were so enthusiastic because they need a transformational change, something that they've been yearning for. And they are seeing it in NGC, how people go from door to door trying to recruit people to become members of the party and how they've been approached, how they've been treated. They're very happy. And with that model, we'll continue to expand. We will need pieces of advice from someone like yourself in different other professions where we can bring everybody together to be able to make this country work for us as a people and not for a party. Going by the political pattern in this country, what gives you the hope that the NGC can actually break through? Simple word is constructive dialogue. That's what I'll tell you. There's something, I don't want to be too academic here. Mm. I wish this interview had been <laughs> conducted in Creole so that people would understand. Mm. But when you have a constructive dialogue, you bring what I call emotional intelligence into that dialogue. Let me give you an example. If you do, uh, you and I were colleagues in the office, and maybe you made a mistake in doing something. And I came, I said, oh, Samuel, why did you do it this way? And uh, you know, you're going to push back, OK? But if I come and say, you know, thank you very much, Samuel. Thanks for your efforts. Everything that you've done is, you know, it's OK. But I have a suggestion for you. Maybe we can do it in a different manner where we can get um, better results. And that is what we in NGC would ensure. I know it's politics. It's mm. going to be difficult. I'm not sitting here and talking, you know, in theories. But depending on how you approach a person, that's how that person is going to, to respond. We we'll listen to the other side. And I will follow your program every day. I see what happens here in the studio. I see what happens in parliament and so on and so forth. But there is an opportunity if we have the right approach. The problem I think we're having in politics in Ceylon is that we look only for ourselves. And that is why you have that pushback. However, if we have a system wherein you can have a fundamental disagreement with me, but at the end of the day, we can say, let's do what's best for the country. 
I think that's a model that can be achieved. I'm very confident about that model. Mm. I pray that one day, someday, we'll begin to realize this kind of um, um, achievements that you were all looking for. There's all right. Also, yes, good. There's also um, another factor that yes. you need to consider, which is context and the way the context has, has been changing over the years. Mm. What we tend to overlook when we do analyze our politics in Sierra Leone, and some people say it will always be the same, we tend to overlook the role that technology is now playing in our lives. You know, um, the mobile phone, mm. the mobile phone is one of those things that is going to contribute a lot to the changing of mindsets in our country. Because even in the most remote areas, somebody can receive a message in his or her own language about an issue that affects them. So if you tend to believe that back in the days when people did not know the news mm -hmm. unless probably uh, there is a radio around and probably there's only one person that has a radio in the entire community, all that has changed. Now people are learning things. Mm. People know when they are being fooled. People know their reality because they are able to converse with people. L let's take this. Uh, 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 oh, we could, we could fly. Oh, we could, we could fly. Converse with people. L let's take this. Uh, 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 <clears throat> The diaspora, for instance, and the diaspora influence in our country. Mm -hmm. A lot of people in the diaspora, they communicate with their mothers and fathers in the villages. And they talk to them. They talk to them about their condition. Because when we send for them to send remittances, they know how they communicate. Now, the reason I'm saying the context has changed, mm. technology should not be underestimated when we look at how changes are happening in our country. So if you think that people have always done this since 1960, mm -hmm. and they would always be thinking or behaving in the same way, somebody is in for a rude shock. And that, we believe, is one of the factors that is going to be changing things in, in our country. And we, as a party, are very much aware of that. And we're using every available means to communicate our story to the ordinary man. All right. Um, gentlemen, continue to stay with me. Let me quickly run um, to Studio 2 where we have Lawrence Williams, a journalist and um, social commentator who's been following um, the activities of political parties in Sierra Leone. And they recently covered the um, National Delegate Convention of the NGC. Lawrence, good morning and welcome to Wake Up Sierra Leone. Good morning. I know you've been following activities and happenings in the NGC. First of all, um, the NGC um, is the second political party to have conducted um, or to have held its national delegate convention where um, party officials have been elected from the world to the national level. Um, what does that bring to the mix at this point? Well, um, to start with, uh, I was not physically present at the NGC's um, convention. I rather assigned a reporter um, to cover that and provide the details um, via reporting. And um, looking at the, the struggles the political parties go through in this country, especially when they are in opposition, and the NGC, with all due respect, we could rather say um, at the initial stage, um, they appeared to be very, very, very vibrant. I loved the way they presented analysis of um, the bread and butter issues between 2018 
up to 2020 and 2021. I, um, in fact, those reports in one of my articles, I refer to it as the, kitchen, the kitchenomics, providing the details about what's happening in the market and how the prices were evolving, were changing and everything. Um, but now we are entering a very crucial phase. And um, the 2023 elections have not seen any political party that is fully prepared, fully prepared to give the SLPP a stiff challenge. So stressing on that um, full preparation, what, what, what does it constitute? Now, by this time, we should have, or political parties should have elected, I mean, their flag bearers and appointed or selected or elected the running mates. So by now, the people of this country should know and be given the opportunity to assess the candidates, the candidacy of the various political parties, those that are coming forward. And mind you, we shall be conducting the elections using the district block PR system. As much as NEC has a responsibility to provide or undertake voter education, political parties being the direct beneficiaries of elections bear a greater responsibility than the ECSL, in my view, because the ECSL cannot reach everyone, I mean, but the parties going to the nook and cranny of our communities to market their candidates their flag bearers will then see that as a, seize that opportunity to provide some form of voter education to the public. Because one thing we are still grappling with, even in by-elections conducted between 2018 to 2022, we've seen substantial uh, amount of void votes. So that's a big problem. And they are on the losing side. Then. The NGC alone as a party cannot take on the SLPP to win state house. NGC hasn't got that capacity. I mean, I respect them as a party, yeah? But they don't have the wherewithal to win presidential elections in this country at this present time. That is my opinion. And why? Because if you look from 2018, okay, tw they were just a new kid in the block in 2017, 2018 elections. They pulled um, about 200 and something thousand, close to 300,000 uh, uh, um, votes for the presidential. They won about four parliamentary seats confined to Cambia alone. Uh, fair enough. I mean, they should be looking at how come didn't we win presidential, I mean, uh, parliamentary seats seat. in the Western area? In the Western area. Okay, there was this um, issue at 110 where the, the supposed candidate of the NGC who could have won uh, after the court and all the results and what have you, he then declined to contest again. I think in the 11th hour, the NGC frowned at that. They, <laughs> they put out a statement and blah, blah, blah. But the fact is, unless there is this, what he was talking about, this progressive nationalist coming together. I mean, NGC teaming up, team, teaming up with other political parties. For for example, under the umbrella of the COP, the coalition of progressive political parties, yes, they can see to it that they present a formidable team with one presidential candidate. I mean, they, they can negotiate on how they could provide the leadership and the flag bearer and the running mate so, so around let, so that. Let me, so let me ask the, the, the question. In 2018, the NGC came in 
as a new I mean, kid in the political block and we saw what happened. The gain, I mean, becoming the third force with um, that four seats, like you mentioned, confined the Cambia, and the presidential candidates pulling some substantial votes as, as a person. And now with the district pro, um, block system, the, the, the proportional electoral system, where it's going to be the, the, the face of the party um, mm -hmm. that would then inspire votes, I mean, would ask people, then people would look at, oh, it's this man. It's this woman we're going in for. So we're going in for those people. Do you think the political parties, say for example the NGC, that does not have a presidential face um, for the 2020 multi-year elections, I mean, it's a blow at this time? Yes, I mean, uh, for me, I thought that uh, the NGC should have crossed that bridge by now. Because they are not, I mean, embroiled in the kind of political or in intra-party bois that we see in the APC. So, from my, my own view, is that I mean, they should have crossed that stage by now. I read the PPRC rulings on petitions, counter petitions, and what have you. So, the PPRC has been able to some extent. I mean, even um, the Honorable KKY was referenced in the report that at some point he opted to intervene that they should settle the dispute using the intra-party uh, dispute mechanisms. And to some extent, it worked. Mm -hmm. uh, in, in a few instances, one or two, I guess, uh, 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 um, uh, it didn't work well. So again, I listened to um, Dr. Bright um, saying that uh, the economy or things will change within three months of an NGC government. And I noted it down. Why? I remember the JJ Safa of the bread and butter fame, uh, who had promised that the bread and butter issues will be addressed within six months of SLPP gaining power. Now, when you make such a profound statement, one may be tempted to ask, what has this party profile? What solutions do they have to address this economy, to address the, the inflation, which is driving everybody crazy? Mm. For me, I would first love to see, I mean, what solutions their manifesto. And besides that, Samuel, let me say this. NGC will not change this country. APC will not change this country. SLPP certainly will not change this country. We will not transform this country. What, what we need this country? is that coalition of progressive thinkers who will come together devoid of their political differences, looking at the country and putting country first. And that is what the, the NGC is Devising. Preaching. The NGC has been preaching that for too long. Yes. But <laughs> my point is, yeah. I mean, when you, they have not been able to, to, to market it well, to get a kind of buying, not only from, I mean, other political parties, but to have the support from the electorate, get the people to believe in that idea, to own that idea, to help you assist and develop that idea, and to make it a reality. Now, for me, it's not about APC coming up with a manifesto, NGC coming up with their own manifesto, SAPP coming up with a new, new manifesto. Yeah? It's about having a country manifesto. So that if we say these are the plans, these like are the things we mean. want, yes, these are the things we want to achieve in the next 20, 30, 40, 50 that years. That be put together by a single political party. No, it cannot be put agenda. together by a single political so party. Ask, we so need everybody on board. So let me quickly ask you this question before I come to Dr. Bright and Harold. Um, 
We, we've seen the face of the party in the 2018 um, presidential race. Dr. Kande Kole Yumkela, the Honorable um, um, Leader there in Parliament. Um, of late, we've, we, we've seen some uncertainty hanging around his, um, his interest in running for the party's ticket. Now, you go back to what happened when President Bill said, Oh, Pana for Kanaos, Pase a old word. And we've seen where the, the, the constitution of the SLPP automatically um, makes President Bill the 2023 flag bearer of the party. But the president did not appoint his running mate. And there is this theory around that Kandekole Yumkela might just come back home. And where is home? They think the SLPP. So where does that put the NGC? And especially when the party has not um, gotten its presidential candidates. Now, I have personally been following that. And I have made conscious attempts to elicit a comment from KKY regarding rumors um, that suggest his possible return to the SLPP. In fact, what I've heard from the grapevine is that uh, if he is to go back to the SLPP, he should rather be, be appointed the running mate to Julius Madabio, who is already the, the flag bearer for the SLPP. Now, since 23rd September 2022, I have continually been reaching out to him via phone calls, text messages, WhatsApp, messages which he has seen and read, but he has reneged to respond. Um, so for me, it's about, yeah, of course, then it's, uh, Dr. Bright will say, oh, KKY is full-blooded NGC. Well, let's hear it from KKY himself, whether he intends to leave, whether he has any intention to go, or what have you. But this is Sierra Leone. I always say that the quintessential Sierra Leonean politician can hardly be trusted based on what we've seen in the past, defections here and there, because politics mm -hmm. It's all about interest. Right. The difference between the African politics and the Western politics is that as our own politicians, most politicians rather go into politics to enrich themselves at the expense of the country, the detriment of the people. Whilst Western politics is about a competition of ideas. <laughs> PLO Mumumba propounded that about the competition of ideas, who has the best, I mean, uh, 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 development plans or vision mm. for the country, and how could he work together, you know, with other people outside his own political party, in fact, to develop or push that agenda. Mm. So for me, it's not just about KKY as an individual. KKY, well, if you like, stay in NGC. If you like, go back to SLPP. What I'm concerned about is mm. the pre prevailing conditions in the country has put us, put us in a beggarly situation. We are worse off today than we were 10 years ago. When you look at the standard of living, look at the cost of living okay. and other things. Stay there with us. Um um, Lawrence, uh, I will come back to you. Let me um, solicit a, con a comment from Harold um, with regards to the submission of um, Lawrence and happenings in the NGC. Um, well, let me first of all thank Lawrence for his passion about, his, about our country. And you, you can see that he is well read, well researched, and um, he is passionate about what's happening. And mm -hmm. There are things that I would agree with him and there are things that I would disagree with him. Okay. And I would agree with him that it would take all of us together mm -hmm. as a people and as a country for us to move 
this country forward. Mm -hmm. it, takes all, it will take all of us to start from the grassroots and right up to leadership for us to get things working for our country. Mm. But what I would slightly disagree with him is the fact that he is telling the silent population and the world at large that NGC is not yet prepared for leadership. <laughs> and um, he was not present at the convention. Mm -hmm. We were literally thrown out of the Freetown City Council Hall Bye. because of the throng of supporters the that crowd. came from all over the country. Mm. The numbers. The numbers, in sheer numbers. Mm -hmm. And like I said, I'm at the top of my, 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 my conversation with you. I was really flabbergasted to see this number of people mm. in one place under one roof who were so enthusiastic, like Lawrence is, mm -hmm. but they were enthusiastic about NGC because they believe in our processes, they believe in our leadership, and only time will tell what would happen for us as a political party and the upcoming elections. Mm. But let's just play it stage by stage. We've started the process. The longest journey starts with the first step. We have taken the first step. We've organized our national convention. Mm -hmm. We held a successful national convention. We elected a national executive. And now we're moving to the next step, which would be the flag bearer convention. We elect our flag bearer, and the process continues. In the interim, we are touching bases with everyone in this country. Now we are communicating in this program. Mm. People are watching, people are listening, and they know that what we are saying here, it hopefully would be something for generations to come. <coughs> so you know what? Let's give NGC that special look, that special attention, because what they are saying, re, I mean, resonates with me. It will uh, resonate uh, with and, my and children. And just and my forgive me, and Lawrence is saying that has been questioned because, for example, with the economic crisis, he's saying, yes, NGC has been going to the market, getting the prices, telling us how much um, an household, um, household is receiving, how much they are spending, and all of that per month and is saying and NGC is saying oh wait a minute <laughs> you if you're being paid the minimum wage you and you have a family of four it means you cannot survive in Sierra Leone with the prices you've been given mm -hmm. but he's saying that the NGC has not given any clear path as to how do we economically redeem this nation mm -hmm. so you've not preferred solutions okay the, the profiling of solutions would come with people at the parliamentary level or different government um, environment, I would say. Mm. Let me ask you this question. Do you think that this sitting government is reaching out to individuals like us who probably, probably have the technical know-how and the ability to be able to come together and solve the economic crisis in this country? Because if you think that only the solutions would come from a core member of your party, I think you're making a big mistake. Because there is strength in diversity. Where we live, or where I come from, for example, when you look at their parliamentary or their <coughs> government, they pull <coughs> talents from different areas, from different political parties. They disagree, they fight, they, what, whatever you say is happening in Taylor, can I, happens can, also. Again, out of curiosity, me, is, me, that not, is that not happening, where the government is actually soliciting diverse opinions on, say for example, the economy? So, I mean, in the sense that when the, pre, when the president, uh, I mean, when we have a, a new fiscal year, the Minister of Finance goes to Parliament, I mean, reads, and, give the, and gives the proposal for the fiscal year, then we, 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 we're seeing Parliament taking about a week before they commence debate on the proposal. So which means, and for now, we have NGC, APC, C4C, um, independent members of Parliament, paramount chiefs. So for example, we would expect, many will say, oh, the APC is going back to the party. Let them sit, let the best minds make decisions as to what should be approved, what should be, be, be said, how should we 
go on, especially with revenue mobilization and expenditure. The NGC do the same. The C4C does the same. What is, is that not happening? Um, I don't think it's happening. I'm sure you've been in the well of parliament. Mm. When some of these ideas that you're bringing forth, they are happening, they're being debated, and so on and so forth. Now, let me give you a specific example. Talk about the um, former um, flag bearer of, um, of NGC, Dr. Kande Yim Keller. He's always present in the well of parliament. He's always been doing what he had to do as a leader of the party. But then when they put him as chairman in such, some of the committees, he would not have even settled down. And that position would have been taken away from him and being put like you're running, you know, like musical chairs. You're moving him from here to there. So how can you get something tangible for government to work in this It's part of the leadership. Honorable Kane Kuleyim Kela is part of the leadership of parliament, part of the committee that even selects mem um, other committee members as a member but of the Let, let me committee. ask you a question. As, as a presenter of this show, you've done a fantastic job, like I said. I've been following you for many years. Thank you. Yes. But well, let me tell you this. If you start a process, you want to make this show be memorable to the rest of Sierra Leone. And in three months, once you start, you put everything in place. And they move you and they put you on behind the, 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 the camera. How would you feel? So the good thing is I have to enjoy the, 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 the power of asking the question. Uh, <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, right here, uh, when you remember when we started this market mm -hmm. uh, surveys right. that uh, Lawrence, mentioned. Lawrence was mentioning, do you remember that after three or four, the NGC proposed that they should declare a state of economic emergency. Mm. Do you remember that we proposed that a special uh, think tank or committee be put together, a consultative committee with government that would be composed of business people, uh, the taxman, and, and, and various economic operators. Do you remember we proposed mm. that? We said that that should be put together. But the problem I believe that we're talking about now is not that we have not proposed, mm. because we believe that Dennis Bright cannot come, neither can the NGC come and prepare the solution that you're talking about. Yeah. But... Okay, there's this or this. NGC has the ability to mobilize the best brains and put them together. And we suggested that, that in this particular case, the operators of the economy must be put together. Do you remember that, Samuel? You remember when we proposed that? I covered it. We had it here. Yeah. We had that conversation. <laughs> yeah. I was here. No, I wanted yes. you to answer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. When we proposed that, do you remember the reaction of government to all those things we are doing, they would send either Imran Sila or this kind of, uh, uh, or the Minister of Information to either debunk or, you know, they're always in that debunking mood and that sort of thing. And we're talking serious things. Only after one, two, three years to discover that the graph of the prices was going right up and then they start making frantic whatever, until the point where WFP declares that people were dying of hunger in Sierra Leone. Now, I think we've done our job as an opposition in holding this government accountable and letting them know exactly where the problem is. And you're talking about bread and butter. They spoke about bread and butter. I have also said on this podium that it appears as if the priorities of the government are not aligned with the priorities of the people. How so? Yes, because if you look at the real priorities of the people is now, this bread and butter you're talking about, mm. it's about water. 
good drinking water. You wake up early in the morning and you see that water is a priority for the, the people. Gov the, gov the government um, crafted the mid the midterm um, development plan, yes, which, sir. I mean, we've had that it was widely consul <coughs> consultative the process in developing that plan. So the people told the government what they need, how they need it, at what time, and so all the aspirations of the people are enshrined in that document, no. and that's what government is implementing. The proof of the pudding. Lies in its eating. Mm. So look at it. Is that plan itself responding to the, 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 the needs and realities of the people now? As, as, as it is crafted? As we go into 2023, you have to think outside the box when you're dealing with the situation in Sierra Leone, because Sierra Leone is not in an ordinary state. So as, as we're going to 2023 now, yes. and, and the NGC coming to, into the mix mm -hmm. to see how they can salvage the, the crisis of the nation, mm -hmm. what are the areas that you would be focusing on as we round off? I, I am not in a position now mm. to give you the entire... Uh, a, a program right. of the NGC as it is. I can speak as leader of the party who is a person, who is a citizen as well. Now, but the first thing you need to understand is that the NGC, the name itself is deliberate. Mm. The name of the NGC is deliberate. It is called the National Grand Coalition. And it's a coalition of progressive thinkers whether they are red, green, black, or blue. It's a coalition of those people who will put things straight. Mm. But the first thing I think we need to talk about is making the institutions in this country work. The problem I think we have is that the decomposition of Sierra Leone itself, I think, is more felt in the collapse, the collapse of its institutions. When I say the institution should work. Mm -hmm. If you have a case now, if you have a, some kind of a problem and you have to go to the police and go to the courts, just ask any individual who has gone through that process and you'll see exactly what their reaction is. I'm not making any critique here of the judiciary, of the police, or anything. Just go outside and ask people who have had some kind of contact with these institutions and you know exactly how they are. We have to look at how the, 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 the legislature itself functions. You know, we, look, do you remember the, 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 the discussion in, in, in parliament at what time about what consult means? when they want to, to elect, or, or when they say the president should appoint somebody after consultation with political parties. Do you remember? From the floor of parliament, people were saying consultation means when you announce to people. And, and it begins to show you that this way we look at Party politics itself mm. has damaged our country to the extent that it is undermining the institutions themselves and how they function. So one thing I think we need to keep in mind, mm. let the police function as a police the force for good. Leave them. Don't give them orders. Look at the way you appoint the IG and these people so that when they are there, they know that they can function for the people are not in the interest of anybody. The judiciary, this is where people depend. You have a land case, you want to go to court, and you want to expect that justice will be done to you. These are the areas I think that we need to begin to look at. All right. So work on the institutions, mm -hmm. but that is not the main thing. What is the main thing? Quickly. I think the main thing, first of all, would be the. I don't want to say. I don't want to sound like JJ Safa, you know, but, but the economy, mm. the economy itself. The problem we have now is that we have a big uh, government, a fat government, and a small private sector. 
it's as if people don't want to work within the private sector anymore because all the money is in government. So people are looking for government appointments. You want to be this, you want to be that. What you need to do is to cut the size of government down. Bring it down right. so that you can expand the, economy, the, the private sector. But right. you see, you're putting me in this funny situation now because <laughs> I cannot tell you everything what, that what we, will you, ex Okay, yeah. let me hold you so that. Please, <laughs> Quickly, yeah. Harold, um, what will be your part in short? I mean, what, 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 what lies ahead of the NGC? Um, could, you have, could you come again? For the, I don't understand the question. I mean, what, what will be your closing consciousness as we round off the conversation? What lies ahead? Okay, uh, for me, I, I would call for unity as a country, as a people. We're all Sierra Leoneans first. Mm. And let us try to do the things that would make this country move forward. Mm. You know, um, we, I, I think the, the fundamental issue here is how do we get the economy together? And so we need a team of economic experts being, consult, being, being um, put together by the president and his team and he being able to listen to those pieces of advice coming from those economic ad, um, advisory team. Mm -hmm. That is fundamentally important because, again, I don't want to sound too academic here, but mm -hmm. you have two, two parts of, of, uh, of the economy, the, 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 the microeconomy and the macro mm -hmm. e economy. Mm -hmm. Those should be closely looked at. And government doesn't create jobs. I think this is the <laughs> thing that is fundamentally wrong with our country. Everyone looks to the government for jobs. You know, me brother don't kind say it will give me sababu. That's not the way it should work. The private sector mm -hmm. should be creating absolutely. Work. And so the government would that change if the NGC say what? Would that change if the NGC is in, of course. If the NGC is in power? Of course, it would change because mm -hmm. we we have we have the the mindset and the the, the 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 group of people that share this idea that I'm putting forward. I mean, this thing is not by accident. What I'm saying here is what is being con you know, constantly being said within the, the NGC as a party. And when you have like minds working together, we will disagree at some point, mm -hmm. but generally we have things that we're all in favor of in common all right. than the things that we disagree on. So, so, so ju just before we round off, let me run through some messages quickly. Um, Lawrence, stay there with us. Saidu Zito is saying, at least KKY tried. I thought he um, should have um, let low for an appointment from um, the president.